Hey everybody, welcome into the Woody Hayes Athletic Center is Ohio State Assistant Coach Media Day. Just the finest day of the year. Oh, I love it. We My have favorite to, day. We have to go a month and a half without talking to you guys. I'm sure you miss us, don't This is oh, Brian Hartline, by the way. I'm Brian. He's the uh, Ohio State Offensive Coordinator and Wide Receivers Coach. Yep. Um, does any part of having uh, a new title, does it like change your, your mindset at oh, all? Oh, it does not. Not at all. <laughs> I didn't think so. I said I wasn't going to talk about football, and then I immediately did. I lost within yeah, 10 no. seconds. You did. Um, do coaches... So you have such a limited period of time off. Yes. You had way more as a player, correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. A lot more time off as a player. How big of an adjustment is that to, you know, for the family, let alone just like work requirements, job requirements? Yeah, I would say that, you know, coaching is not a profession. It's a lifestyle. Um, there really is no time off. Like there's no time at which I can just put my phone down and not respond to something. Mm -hmm. So, uh yeah, I would say, again, it's not just, you know, being in the Woody. It's my wife and the family also being involved. Uh, that's the biggest thing I would say when it comes to being a coach. So how much planning has to go into? Here are the dates. We know for sure this is when vacation is going to yes. be every year. Yeah, the, the ability to get provided the actual days off so the wife can plan that is critical. <laughs> First of all, it's more expensive the closer you get. <laughs> Second of all especially as a family, usually you have to do those eight, nine, ten months out, maybe a year out, even based on what you're doing. Uh, if you don't do that, then you end up staying at home, which is fine too. Uh, but I would say the planning is critical and, and and the wives have done a phenomenal job with that. Who gets, is that the most important vote for where you're going to go? Yeah. That goes to the wife? I mean, because I mean, we hear it. I mean, my wife does a phenomenal job, but you hear from the other guys that my wife got this. Is We don't do anything. We just show up. Like they, they tell us what to do, you know, what to do. Maybe pack our own bags, but that's about it. Hey, okay. Do you, is it a secret what you're going to do for this vacation? Not always. Okay. Uh, we do have a, I do have a say every, every other year, I think of where we can go again, being the time being so crunched. So I would think like, I'm trying to put it in their shoes. Let's get out of the country so that they can't recruit, that they can't think about football. Yeah, but I don't know if they want to go out of the country. <laughs> okay. You know, so I would say no cell service. Yeah. That, that's a good thing. You can still be in the mountains or be somewhere else where you're not getting service. Uh, and they can still get that done. But I mean, the person on the receiving end of that text, that's never a good enough reason. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You just have to get the like proper, like automatic reply. Yeah, I know. You got to look into that. <laughs> look into that. So. I don't know how to manage that. That's... I'm just an ideas man, yep. Brian. Um, when when you think about the month of June, so when you are working, uh, some coaches you can tell they're going to fake it. You have the evaluations and all the stuff, people coming in on campus. Yep. I, I've watched you work at those, and like it seems like you truly enjoy those opportunities. Yep. Remember last year there was a massive thunderstorm, and you still took like 20 dudes out on the field and you guys were working through that. It what wasn't it? lightning or anything. No. Just felt, you know. I'm not saying that you yeah, broke any rules. On, I'm not saying that. It, yeah. it was safe yes. until it wasn't, and yes. then they came back inside. That's correct. Uh, why is it that you, I mean, we all, I think I, I thought you would enjoy the coaching part and the guys on your team, like that was going to be a fit for you. But it's gone beyond that with some of the camp stuff in June that other coaches don't seem to like. Why, yeah. why do you get enjoyment out of that? I mean, I would say that, I mean, it's a lot to it. I mean, one, I love just helping young guys. I mean, if they're willing to spend their time on campus, you know, and will come see me, I don't want them to disappoint. Every time they leave me, I want them to be like, holy crap. Like, I just got, he coached the heck out of me. Like, I, I want them to walk away impressed with me. So every time I'm in front of somebody, I want to impress them. I would say that, you know, People work really hard for their money and for them to choose to travel to Ohio to come to our camp and to see me, I don't take that lightly. So, you know, I, you can't allow a bad experience with some other person impact the next person because they are totally different from each other and they have no correlation to each other. I think it's immature to have a bad experience with one individual or not like whatever and then mm -hmm. take it out on them. So. I just, all those, all those factors play a part and I'm not saying I'm perfect, but you know, if you choose to come see us, you know, I'm going to give you what I got. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. I'm going to try to make you better. And I want you to leave knowing 
wow, I went, I'm glad I went to Ohio State and I saw Coach Hartline. And I appreciate his, his intensity. I appreciate the way he coached me. You know, all those things. I want to make sure you leave uh, knowing that you chose Ohio State with the right reasons and you got out of it what you wanted. Now, if it doesn't go the way you want, I can't, I can't help you with that. But I'm going to do everything I can to help you improve and, uh, and show, your, uh, show my respect to you for choosing to come to me. This is the time of year where you're also doing, you have some opportunities to, you know, have your unit bond, yep. whether they come out to your house, whether you yep. take, you know, some top golf, wherever else. Yep. Are, are you driving all those decisions? Is the room deciding what they want to do? Uh, they pick a little bit of it. And my wife obviously does a huge part in helping set all that up and the catering and all that goes on. The kids are growing up now, so now they're going to be more involved. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we usually have fine, fun activities to do at the house. But any time we can spend together as a group uh, outside of the Woody, I think it's healthy. Um, we did not get too many times. Did you that. think that when you were a player? You're like, I gotta go to coach. No, no. You think it's a you think it's a uh, a pain. Yeah. But then when you leave, you appreciate it, and that's always the case. And again, we don't get a chance to do it a lot because a lot of guys like to rest and be at their place and you know be in their apartments and. Or go to a movie and do their own thing. But that force fun, when you leave, you usually appreciate after the fact. And frankly, like it's one way for me and my wife to show appreciation to them um, and just let them know that we care. And, uh, and you know, we, let them come into our house and our home with our kids and just feed them and have fun and listen to music and watch whatever's on TV a little bit and just, you know, I want them to see us as humans sometimes and not just as the coach. And uh, that's really important. You said catering, so you you don't have something special you like to cook? No, I don't always really grill it out. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times we'll bring in a good catering and those guys can help pick it. Uh, and we have so many great food trucks yeah. out there. We'll bring in one or two and let the guys do their thing. Okay. Yeah. Right. I was going to ask if you had a I mean, favorite. It's a good way to do it. You can't just pick a favorite. I mean, hot just... when ready, that's there's no better oh, food. Than, like They make it and give it to you. So. <laughs> That's the best way. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's no special side that you're whipping up, no no mac and cheese, I get it. Yep. Somebody else can probably cook it better. Yep. No offense to you. Yeah, that's all right. No offense taken. <laughs> How's your golf game? Uh, terrible. Terrible. Good. Yeah. Do you, do you ever wonder what you'd be able to do if you like had more time to play golf? I don't know if you'd want uh, to. It doesn't seem like you love it. I don't think I but would you're really want good. to. You're really good at it. I would I would enjoy it. I'd probably want to get better at it. I'd get competitive with it. But like, really, I have no desire right now to be really good at golf. I've told right people. Now, I've don't. told people because I've played with you a couple times now. I'm like, you can see the athleticism and the hand-eye coordination, and like 25% of it, it's really, really good. Yeah, 25%. and then if you got to practice, like it'd be scary. You never know, you know. But well, you got a job now, so yeah. it's, <laughs> Don't that, think that ship has sailed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so, you at least have you know your personalized memberships golf have given been given away. Oh, well, it's true. I didn't get them. That's unfortunate. Though. Yeah. yeah. Could have kept him just for me. Anyway, he's he's Brian Hartline. I have taken too much of his time already on Ohio State Assistant Coach Media Day. We have a lot more interviews coming your way, but we appreciate Brian giving us five or six, I don't know. Something like a that. Couple, appreciate couple it. Awesome. Minutes of his yeah, time. it was fun. All right, thank you. All right, we're back here in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on a media day with the <coughs> assistant coaches. So, Tony Alford, who's suddenly one of the longest tenured assistants in this oh, building, right? About that, right? That's happened in a hurry, right? Well, just feels like it hasn't, been, it hasn't been in a hurry, but it's, okay. but it's happened. <laughs> okay. Well, running backs coach Tony Alford uh, here with, he's got one of the uh, most interesting position groups, most loaded position groups, but we're not here to talk about that. He's already done that on media day. We've done that. It's, it's summertime. You don't get a ton of vacation. <laughs> you got to have some plans for the summer. When you get away, what are we going to do? Well, my one son's getting ready to go off to college, so we spend a lot of time getting prepared for that mentally and <laughs> physically but um no and then my younger son he's you know he's trying to trying to be a college football player and get himself to be there have an opportunity to do that so we're spending a lot of time talking to college coaches him working out going to some camps things like that uh, so my time's really spent with them um and then they're off time i'm gonna have a bunch of cigars <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right maybe maybe a few places around columbus you could find tony offered if you know where to look that's but it. he's not going to tell you those on this I show shall not and if you know you know um <laughs> When you get when you're with your son going through that process and yeah. you've been recruiting people for many years now, yeah. do you think that's intimidating for other coaches that you know what's going on? Oh, I I, <laughs> I hope not. I mean, everybody's just go they're just doing their job, you know. But it has been a little different for me as far as 
some of the conversations that are happening. Um, sometimes I hear some things. I'm like, damn, is that how I, I sound like that? <laughs> but no, it's um, but it's been good. And, and um, you know, he's. He's, he's kind of making his own way and his own name. And um, so, yeah, but it's, it's, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. But but I'd like to think that the coaches, most of the guys I know them in some capacity or know someone who does. So it's been pretty easy going. And, um, you know, but he's still he's just starting the process. So sure. hopefully some things will happen for him the way he wants them to and we'll kind of go from there. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be on the camp circuit a little bit over yeah. the summer, right? Yeah, he is. He's going to um, – He's going to Ohio U this weekend, Miami of Ohio the following week. He's got the, the deal in Chicago. He's going to Eastern Kentucky, so he's bouncing all over the place. Is that part – I would assume you want to be at as many of those as you can, but you've got to be here, you know, helping recruit and evaluate other people on campus. Yeah, we have those official visits, so he's doing a lot of them on the weekends. Okay. So, and then obviously there's some throughout the week, but um, – so uh, I'm hopeful to be able to make at least one of them, but otherwise, you know, his mom will take him and, and – uh, and so we'll go there with her and some of his teammates and things like that and perform, and, and um, I'll find out how he does from there. Has he scheduled anything in Laramie yet, or is that? No, he tried to, but I told him he'd have to move oh. out. No, okay. <laughs> no, no. That's no there's nothing going on in oh. Laramie, oh, okay. ever. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, great. It, when you think about your tenure here and getting comfortable, I, like I was talking to Perry Eliano about this. Like, Coaches have to move their families <clears throat> There's a transition for them that maybe we don't think about. Um, maybe this is also true for you that you have the stability that you know all about Columbus. You you can sell Ohio State because you've been doing it for a long time now. Uh, what is that that value for you that you you are entrenched? You've been running the Ohio State running backs room for almost a decade now. What's the value for the longevity for you in this role? Well, I think there's, there's the professional value and there's the personal value. And, and the professional value is I think that, you know, when you're talking to young men and families uh, about their college decision or where they're going and with the transient state that college football is, right, and in, continues to be in, that, you know, and they start looking into another school and saying, well, this coach has been to three different schools on a matter of six years or whatever it may be. and here I am going on year nine mm -hmm. and, and I've been very fortunate and blessed that, you know, you can get 15 years of my professional career between uh, Ohio State and Notre Dame. And um, so I haven't moved a lot. And, and a lot of that has been by design, <laughs> you know, where some things just like, like this, I'm in a great place. And so um, haven't been in a hurry to jump off and go somewhere else. Um, I think on the on the. Um, also on the professional side, you know, I've built the room the way I like it. Yeah. And I've gotten I've gotten young men that, that I've been so fortunate to be around and their families. And and so there's a certain culture that's been built in that room. And, and I would like I'm not going to say it's me. They, those guys have, have brought that on and and they've um, continued that thing going at, a, at a, I think, at a pretty good rate. Um, so that that's been good that I can see kids through and then. Once you get to why do you do what you do and you're watching young men grow, literally I'll start meeting some of these kids when they're 15, 16 years old and, and, and see them all the way through the game. And, and so that's been fun. That's been a, been a reward for me. But then on the, on the uh, personal side, you know, my children have all graduated from Dublin Drum High School. Yeah. And that they haven't had to bounce around and, and make new friends and meet new people and transition here to transition there, that, that they've been able to be very stable. And, and that, that, that's... That's very, very big for me. So when you see people new or younger in this profession than you, like Perry, or I don't, I mean, he's newer here, let's just put it that way, uh, or James Laurinaitis going one year and then back here, maybe those are isolated cases, but four coaches that move and have to go somewhere new and learn a new building and get new key codes and fill out paperwork, how long do you think it takes for a coach to truly settle into their role oh i don't know i think everybody's everybody's different you know and, and listen i was on that trend where i was moving every year it was a, <laughs> but you have to there early was, there's yeah, they there call it a ladder time time right i moved every year for four consecutive years every 11 10 11 months i was moving so sure. so that's part of it and 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 you know that going into this profession right i've just been very fortunate and um so so i so i uh, start with that but to say how long does it take to get comfortable i you know i think everybody's different um, I will say this about this profession. When we move as coaches and we move from one building to the next, rather it be from one state to the next or all the way across the country, we pretty much have ready-made friends. 
<laughs> and and where the families, on the other hand, they've yeah. got to really adjust and adapt to whole entire new surroundings. Um, maybe there's no family around, things like that. So, um, but I think it's pretty easy transition work wise. Um, where it can get where it can get cumbersome, I think, is when you're dealing with your kids. You know, when I first moved here years back, my my oldest son, who's now 21, almost 22, but my oldest son, I think. If I remember right, he was like in seventh grade and he didn't talk to me for like two and a half, three weeks. <laughs> I mean, he was so upset that we were leaving. So, sure. um, but, but kids are very resilient. Um, and so they manage and you do the best you can. And, and, um, but to say if there's a timetable, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I could, I could pin that. I think everybody's different. Is that the part that really gets you? Not how long you've been here, but that you have a 22 year old. I'm telling you, man, I'm old. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. You know, when you start talking to some of your players, I mean, I was talking to Zeke Elliott and I'm thinking like, I still look at Zeke as like one of my kids. Zeke's been in the league almost eight years. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Not even in Dallas anymore. That, I know. It's not- right? I know. But no, it, 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 um, yeah, just confirming that I'm old. <laughs> well, you don't act like it, which is the most important. I act like a child. You're still young enough to go beat up those guys with a baseball bat on the practice field, which is the real key. And uh, That's it. I'm going to try and hit my marks here with the amount of time that we're allowed to talk to Tony Alford before he's got to go back. He's got very strict rules for appearing on camera. We do? You do. You do. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's, yeah, you're very particular. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Then <laughs> well, you've wasted my time. I have. <laughs> That's, and I only got in one Wyoming reference, but we're going to... There's nothing to talk about. Oh, come on. It's Wyoming. They've got a bronze boot. That's all that really matters right now. Yeah. You just take that down to the buckhorn, and there's plenty to do once <laughs> the it gets buckhorn. there. <laughs> yeah. About that spot. So you already know. You already know. I'll take you there. <laughs> no, I'm not going. Cool. <laughs> fine. Whatever. This is Tony Alford, a, a proud alum of the Colorado State mm-hmm. University, uh, a, a Rams record holder. I don't know. They still, is no, that still it, standing? No, that's gone too. Those those gone. Like I said, that's gone too, right? Okay. Well, I don't know. Like they don't I never the, existed there. They don't run the ball quite as much as they used to, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. He's he's Tony Alford. We greatly appreciate his time Thank and you. joining us on the podcast. Thanks, Thanks guys. I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, brother. Well. Yep. Let's <laughs> see. All right, welcome back into the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Ohio State Assistant Coach Media Day, the best day of May, if not the year. Uh, well, this is Ohio State quarterbacks coach Corey Dennis. And Corey, June camp season. Is it good for assistant coaches, or are you kind of like, let's get this over with? No, be- you got to love it, right? <laughs> I mean, that's you, you get to do ball. So anytime that you could be stuck in a room with no walls, you know, watching <laughs> film, or you could be out running around with yeah. a ball. And I'm going to have my uh, six-year-old, he's going to, He's going to come to the youth camp. So anytime I can get, a, you know, get after him a little bit, we'll be good. Yeah, I can't believe uh, that he's six. Yeah. Um, we've seen him around it's, you know, since the, really when he was born. He got to go, you know, he's done through him, some skull session and like, yeah, walk through the shoe. Yeah. Like th- that part is uh, being a father of, of someone who's six now and a father of two, right? That's how special are those moments? No, uh, they are. They're, they're extremely special, right? So, you know, Anytime that you're going to do something like that is really cool because, you know, in this profession, you miss a lot. So, you know, you miss a lot of whatever it is, flag yeah. football games or recitals or whatever it is. So anytime that you can, you know, find something. And, and those are lifetime memories for me, which are unbelievable, which that's what this place gives you, lifetime memories. It seems like the logistics of making sure that your kids can get down. It's hard enough to get to the horseshoe anyway. <laughs> yeah, like, right. who, who organ? I think Nikki yeah. probably has a good idea yeah. of where to go yeah. and which streets to turn on, but like no. that can be hard to set up, right? Yeah, they don't get no. to stay the night at the right. Blackwell. So hat, hats off to Nikki. She gets it done. She knows. She knows. She knows her way around the shoe a little bit, so she's good. Okay. Uh, so once camp season is over, you guys do not get a ton of time off. You knew that getting yeah. into the profession, yeah. But you do have a couple of weeks to yourself. You don't have to give away your plans, but what what's already on deck for the summer once you get to that Ooh. moment? I don't know, man. I just, I'm keep, I'm keeping it low key for sure. I'll find a pool somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I'll let the kids go swim around a little bit, but keep it low key. Okay. Parker said that you might have got out and played some golf over yeah, the Yeah, I did. I smoked him on the front. Okay. So that's all that, you know, I beat him on the front. That's where we're going to leave that's it. That's where we're going to leave it? Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I mean, because because I've seen Parker out there at some of the coaches' events. Seems like he can get it around pretty good. Yeah, no, Parker's a great <laughs> golfer. He really is. Which that's why it caught us both off. It caught us both off guard. You know, I was playing okay, and he was playing really bad. So <laughs> it, it made it a uh, it, it made it for a fair game. Okay, so you didn't want to just turn yeah, it in right, at nine, uh, like we're yeah, done. No, this is I good. tried. I tried. He was like, "No way, we got to go." Okay, um, that's that part of the summer when you're you guys have such few opportunities to get away. Are are you able to really turn it off? 
or do you just get like the iPad out? Like I'm gonna watch some film right here while the kids are in the pool. Uh, I mean, you, you try your best to turn it off, but you know, recruiting never sleeps. So you're always working, you're always trying to find a way to get an edge, but you know, it is good to kind of, you know, take a step back, decompress a little bit uh, before, you know, you get into fall camp and you're really diving into things and you're really getting after it for the season. This is what? Year eight, nine around here? It feels like. Yeah, eight, yeah, eight. I'm no, trying, nine, trying to remember nine. the exact number. Like it's it's flown by. It has. What? What's different about the way you try to approach the job from when you started? I know you. everyone wants to keep things the same, but you grow and you evolve. What, what's different about it for you? Uh, that's a great question. I think, you know, starting off as a young kid here you know as an intern making coffee and doing everything else is you just try to cast a wide net and just try to find value anywhere you possibly can right like i'll go do this i'll do that i'll i'll help here i'll help there and just anywhere you can find value you try to go through it um to where now you've been in it you have a role uh your position coach you really try to hone in on one thing and become an expert and I think that that's probably more the different of becoming an expert at something mm -hmm. and really kind of capitalizing on that versus casting that wide net of things. When the quarterbacks have their summer bonding activities and they're at your house or wherever you go, what's going to be on the table? You know what? We talked about it recently. We're going to get a uh, we're going to get a pickleball match rolling up okay. here in a little bit. Yeah, so we got to. <laughs> We got to figure that out. So I played pickleball the other day, and all those guys play pickleball. So we're gonna we're getting a pickleball match. That's what we're gonna get on the okay. uh, on the docket. Have you been playing a lot of pickleball? No, no, not at all. So you're but starting I would. at ground I'm zero. In. Yeah, ground zero. Okay. But I'm in though. I'm does in. somebody already have a leg up on you then? Somebody. Uh, Devin definitely does. Okay. He'll be he'll be the pickleball champ. I bet. Okay. So but we'll get after him. A little all right. bit. Well, if I mean if you can beat Parker Fleming for nine holes, yeah, you can then, take then, down then Devin. Devin. Yeah, you're in good shape. Devin. Yeah. I'm all right. But what will you guys eat then after that? Oh man. You gotta have this planned out. Not yet. I'm, I'm a, you know, we'll, we'll play it by ear. We'll, okay. we'll figure something out. We'll, all right. There's, there's nothing of, special that no. Nikki makes that no, she's got, they, she does it's it coming all. in. No, yeah, she, no, 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 Nikki cooks it all. But there's a bunch <laughs> of good restaurants, you know, Short North, uh, Bridge Park. We'll find somewhere to go eat. Okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I think she knows somebody who has a restaurant over there. <laughs> yeah, so right? maybe that'll help. So, I don't, yeah, no, we'll, we'll find somewhere. There's a good, uh, I like the Italian spot, uh, Short North. So okay. might have to that one. Up. There you go. Look that up. Uh, he's getting into summer mode. That doesn't yeah. mean vacation for not the coaches, yet, no. unfortunately. No, yeah, not yeah. yet. We're, we're, uh, but once uh, once June's over, there's pickleball coming and then yep, yep. cookouts of some sort. Some, we'll see yeah, we'll yeah. figure something out. All right. He's Corey Dennis. I uh, appreciate him giving us some time on the podcast. Uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. This is Perry Eliano, second year Ohio State safeties coach. Is that, does that sound right to you? A year or two? <laughs> First one was probably a whirlwind, wasn't it? No, absolutely. No, it, it feels good. feels good to get a second spring. Uh, get your feet totally up underneath you. It's, it's been awesome. It's been great. I think we talk about that all the time for players, learning a scheme, learning a new coach. I mean, I, I would imagine there's got to be an element of that that we maybe overlook for coaches too. Absolutely. You know, it, it's about relationship. Um, we're built on that as a program and, and really knowing our players, knowing what gets them going, knowing the things with their families, their background, true background, and having really, really good conversation and knowing that, you know what, my coach has my back and he's there for me. Well, you've, all, you've got to move. You've got to, you know, everybody's got families that they've got to get set up. I mean, that part's not. When did you maybe start feeling comfortable just in Columbus, not just in this building? Well, uh, I, I would say when my family got up here, obviously, when I first got the job here, it was just me. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was that was difficult to a certain degree, but my family wouldn't. But right down the road in Cincinnati. But uh, once they got up here, uh, once I had the players over to my house, um, you know, and just had an opportunity to break bread with them and just really just get around them and know them as young men. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty cool. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited about, you know, what's what's to come. And it's, it's awesome to know our guys. What's the go to meal at the uh, Eliano house? Ooh, let's put it like this. <laughs> it, it, it's it's not hamburgers and hot dogs. OK, we got to go <laughs> above that. All right. That's absolutely. Well, yes. Well, who's the main chef then? Who's or, or are we all um, or is that coming in? Well, I'll tell you what. No, I'll tell you what. Uh, I do the meat. OK. And my wife does the sides. Uh, right. So uh, we're, we're a team. We do this thing together. What's the best side that your wife makes? Mac and cheese. Mac man. and cheese. Oh, my gosh. She's yeah. got that figured out? Yeah, it, it don't last long. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what are the secrets? Multiple cheeses? Mm, what's, I, can't I can't tell you one. that. Okay. I can't tell you that. <laughs> All right. when, when you're able to get them over, you know, with the family at your house where you're comfortable and you're away from here, um, 
that's the kind of relationship building that you're talking about. Like, I mean, what's the difference of doing that at your house and as opposed to, I, obviously you're, you're the coach here right. and you're trying to get things done. I would imagine that those conversations are very different. Right. I, it, you know, it comes down to this, you know, we always talk about, we have to be really, really close. We have to really know each other to where I give the, you know, illustration when it's fourth in the game, you have to have an unwavering trust that I've prepared you for that moment. And I have to have an unwavering trust that you've prepared and done the necessary things for that moment. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the illustration I give, but it's, we spend so much time together and uh, I want them to know my, my family. I want them to know my sons, my sons look up to them. Yeah. You know, my wife is like a mother away from home for them. So, uh, you know, college is hard enough. And so, uh, you know, they need a safe space and, uh, you know, we provide that for them. And, you know, like I said, I love my room. I love the young men that I coach. Uh, they're working extremely hard and um, we'll continue to do that. I'm trying to remember. It feels like the season was like 10 years ago. I, your kids got to come through the school session and go through the walk with you, right? At least once, right? Yes. Uh, those moments when you have that opportunity, what what do those mean for you? What do they mean for, for your family? I mean, they're priceless. Um, you know, uh, hats off to Coach Day for allowing, you know, us as coaches to be able to do that. Um, and um we don't take that lightly. Um, I'm very, very appreciative of that, that uh, my sons, my family, you know, go through this experience with us, highs and lows. And, um, you know, uh, it just makes you work that much harder, uh, especially when you work for an outstanding guy like Coach Dick. Yeah, I always am amazed, like thinking of the logistics, because you got to have the support system. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to bring the kids down. They're not yeah. most of the time not staying at the yes. at the Blackwell with you. Right. It's like just to make that happen takes that full team effort, not just in this building, but in your own house. Absolutely. Uh, hats off to my wife. <laughs> She's the true head coach <laughs> okay. of the family. Uh, she allows me to do my job and uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm appreciative of that. Uh, like I said, we're in this thing together and uh, we do this together. And uh, so I'm just appreciative that uh, she gives the support that I need to be the very best version of myself here in the Woody. Now you all don't get a ton of time off, stating the obvious. Do you have, when you get a couple weeks this summer, are there vacation plans? I know camp season's coming, mm -hmm. you've been on the road, you get some time, what all do you have planned? Anything? Yeah, yeah, me and uh, me and the family are gonna get away and then uh, <laughs> me and mama are gonna get away. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we got, we, got, we got it split up, but uh, uh, looking forward to June, first and foremost, uh, we, we've got a task at hand to um, bring the very best players in, the, in America here on campus, their families. Um, you know, there's nothing like Ohio State. And then once we uh, once we do what we need to do um, in June and take care of our business as a staff, then uh, there'll be time to uh, kind of de decompress, get away. And then let's get ready to make this run. I feel like some coaches are faking that when they say, oh, I'm excited for June. I don't get that impression for you. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell you what, it, it, you know, it takes players. And uh, we've got a great product here. Uh, we got a great university. And so I'm looking forward to the parents. I'm looking forward to the <laughs> players getting on campus, getting around our players. Uh, we have a phenomenal culture. So just to get them on campus, several of them that will be here have been here several times. So. You know, it'd be like a big happy family reunion. But uh, no, we're excited to get them on campus and, you know, continue to showcase Ohio State and Columbus. I'd love to keep talking to Perry Eliano. I could do that all day, but I promise five minutes and I try and hit my mark so that maybe they'll come back and do it again some <laughs> other time. So I appreciate Perry taking time. For Perry, I'm Austin Ward. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Go Bucks.